shame to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. Just how it felt 
Since that day and since that hour, God has been real, but I can feel His holy power. worship Buddha, you can worship Muhammad, they don't have a feeling to give to you. I'm not going to serve a dead God. They did nothing for me. They didn't, they didn't, his spirit, their spirit, they don't have a spirit. God is so good. Mm, I'm just so thankful that I serve a living God. The one that made the way possible when there was no way. My way maker, whatever I need, that's just what he delivers. And he said that if we ask, we can receive, Brother Charlie. Man, God is good. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good Thank to be you, with everybody tonight, hallelujah. amen. What is this, the fourth Thank night? Jesus. Feels good. <laughs> I missed it. We've. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've been in a... Revival, and man, ain't nothing like it. <laughs> Tell you what, I didn't grow up going to them, and I don't know why anymore. <laughs> I missed it, amen. Well, he ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but good.
suffered it all aren't you amen y'all know this little chorus sing it with us if you want to stand stand i know some of you've been sitting a little bit if you don't that's okay too but i sing praises to his name Sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh to your name oh Lord praises to your name oh Lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised I sing praises to your name oh to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, oh Lord, glory to your name. To your name, yes. Oh Lord, praise praises, to, praises your name. to your name. Oh, oh Lord, for oh, your name is great and greatly to be praised. We sing praises to your name. Bless your name, O oh Lord. We glorify you, Father. To your we magnify name. you, Lord, tonight. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We lift you up. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. While you remain standing, turn to the book of chapter 5. Book of Ezra, chapter 5. Look over to your neighbor and tell your neighbor that it's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Look over to somebody else and tell them that the evangelist loves you tonight. Look at somebody behind you and tell them that Jesus loves you more. Mm. 
We just thank each and every one of you once again for being here. And by the help and grace of God, we hope to encourage you tonight. Israel. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Evangelist Donnie Lawson on behalf of the Not Ashamed Ministry team. And we would like to say thank you for worshiping with us on these broadcasts. If you have been blessed, you've been helped in any way from these broadcasts, we would really appreciate hearing from you. Email us your prayer requests, your testimonials, to the address at the bottom of your screen, and we, we would will respond to you. And we would like to ask you to please continue to pray for us as we go about proclaiming the word of Christ in song and in word. And remember, Jesus is coming soon. And for those that are saved, those who are born again, and we pray that you are ready. And may the Lord richly bless you exceedingly abundantly above all that you may be able to ask or think in the service of Christ Jesus, Not Ashamed Ministries. Thank you. May you have a blessed year. Chapter 5 and verse 5. But the eye of their God was upon the elders. Say it with me. But the eye... But the eye of their God was upon the elders. Fathers, we come before you in the name of the Son, Jesus. We pray for a few moments of time. Lord, that anointing that is needed for this moment, this time, this hour. You know every heart, every soul, every need tonight that is represented here, that is listening, Lord, that is watching. Father, we pray that you just have your blessing holy way. We ask, O oh Lord, that your word will find some good soil with good seed to spring up. Lord, to bring much fruit for the kingdom of God. And we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen and amen. I, won't, I know I didn't read the whole verse, but you may be seated if you like. But the eye of their God was upon the elders. Look over somebody across the room and get their, make eye contact with them and tell them the night's message is the God who is watching leaders. I'm going to let that soak in for a moment. The God who is watching leaders. Amen. I know maybe a few might have went, Whew. that passes me tonight. But the fact of the matter is, every single one of you is a leader. I'm going to ask my granddaughter, Ashlyn, will you stand up? She's a granddaughter, but she's also a leader because this little boy over here in front of Sister Marva watches everything she does and wants to do just exactly what she does. That makes her a leader. I'm trying to bring this to reality in a solemn way tonight. Whether you're a pastor, whether you're the mayor, the governor, the president, whether you're a song leader, choir director, whatever position you may hold, you're a leader. Whether you're a sister or a brother, mom, or dad, grandparents, we can just name all kinds of titles tonight, but everybody is a leader. And we've got a great responsibility. I watched my little grandson follow me around, and I watched him try to walk in the same steps that I walked. I've watched him do the same moves I would make. I've watched him do different things. And let me remind somebody tonight that there's eyes watching you. But there's also a God in heaven above that's got his eyes on every one of us. He knows when a sparrow falls. 
He sees a lily of the field and he knows when it's clothed and he's got his eye upon you. Somebody tell somebody that the Lord has his eye upon you. One, one translation says he's a God, but God was watching over the Jewish leaders. Another one says the eye of their God was on the chiefs of the Jews. Another one says looking after the Jewish leaders. Another one, the eye of their God was upon the ancient of the Jews. Another one says, but the leaders of the Jews were under God's watchful eye. Let me tell somebody that night that's listening that we are under the mighty watchful eye of an almighty God uh, who is all-knowing, ever-present. Uh, oh, my friend, He's everywhere, uh, and He knows everything. Uh, and there has already been preached this week. Uh, uh, there's nothing hid. Uh, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, and there's nothing hid uh, uh, from the watchful eye of a living God. Therefore, I want to tell somebody, He has seen your tears. He sees your tears. He's heard your cry in the middle of the night at 1 a.m. in the morning. He has listened and heard your cry. I told you I'm going to try to encourage you a little bit. There's a in this passage of Scripture in Ezra. There was a great controversy stirred among the people of opposing views with accusations flying and condemnations mounting. Sounds like the halls of our Congress, don't it? Amen. I'll amen myself. Good preaching, Brother Donnie. It sounds like a few congregations we know too, don't it? Amen. You see, you come too late to tell me I preach too hard. And you come too late to tell me I preach too soft. Amen. I love you enough, and I'm going to tell you in the beginning, I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I'd rather you leave here tonight mad at me and we shout the hills of glory together uh, than me to pat you on the shoulder uh, and you be all leaving here thinking everything's okay uh, and you gnashing in hell on me. Uh, I don't want nobody's teeth sinking in my flesh. Here we look at Ezra in the day of Ezra. And as he was uh, 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 in this passage of Scripture, we're not going to go into all the history about it and all the foundation about it. My point is tonight that, that our God is still watching us. Uh, uh, there's nothing hid from Him. Uh, uh, we can try to sweep it under a rug. Uh, uh, we can try to put it under the bed. Uh, uh, we can hide it between the mattresses. Uh, uh, but my friend, God still sees it uh, and He knows all about it. Uh, uh, we see that God was on the move during Ezra day uh, and change was in the air. Uh, uh, so many times we will ask the question uh, and I'll hear the statement made uh, uh, why don't God move? Uh, honey, he's waiting on you and I. Uh, he's already made the move. Uh, uh, we can't get out ahead of him. Uh, uh, we can't outdo him. Uh, uh, we can't out move him. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, it's just like playing chess or checkers. Uh, uh, every time you make a move uh, uh, God has done move before you ever got settled. Uh, and so here in the day of Ezra uh, God was uh, uh, sweeping through uh, and it was bringing revival back into the land uh, how many tonight wants revival back in Bledsoe County uh, how many wants to see uh, uh, what used to be uh, aren't you sick and tired of people uh, uh, saying I wish uh, uh, we had the good old days back uh, uh, my friend I am uh, are you sick and tired of people uh, uh, talking about what happened uh, in the history uh, uh, don't you want to see it in the now I've had many and some of you know I just came back from Africa and uh, I've had people ask me when I, I've been on these trips and they'll say why don't God do those things here in the United States he does I've seen them I've witnessed them I've been a part of them and he's still doing it and he'll do it right here tonight if we allow him Amen? One person asked, 
uh, one of the bishops over there in Africa said, why, uh, uh, how, how come you seeing such a uh, 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 move of God? And he said, because we are unlike you Americans. We don't have a hospital on every corner. We don't have a doctor on every corner. We don't have money to go out and buy medication. Uh, we've got to trust somebody. Uh, and the only one we know to trust is God. Amen. And he's still the same today as he was yesterday. And he will be forevermore. He, rose, he raised the dead up uh, uh, when he was Jesus was walking on this earth. Uh, and he's still doing it today, Brother David. Uh, uh, you say, how do you know? Well, I've witnessed it. I've been there. Uh, I've seen the dead come back to life. Uh, I've seen the knots uh, on people's uh, uh, to leave. Uh, I've seen people that couldn't walk, walk. Uh, I've seen people in wheelchairs uh, uh, get up, uh, my friend, and move around. Uh, you may label me whatever you want to label me. Uh, but one thing you can label me uh, when the trump of God sounds uh, you can label me gold uh, uh, my friend uh, and you can say this uh, uh, just like Paul said uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, when he stands before him uh, uh, that I fought a good fight uh, and I've kept the faith uh, and there's laid up for me uh, a crown of righteousness I'm not supposed to be doing this today Brother Leon, you know something about it. According to doctors, I'm not supposed to be up here today. <laughs> What's a doctor know? If you look on his office, on that sign that's hanging there in his office, it says practicing medicine. But if you get in the Word of God, you'll find that it is uh, uh, Jesus Christ is Jehovah Rapha, the healer. He is the physician, the mighty physician. And he's looking down. Just uh, 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 Somebody just said something other testimony a minute ago or two or three of you is talking about uh, 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 needing uh, 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 a touch from God, needing a healing. Uh, and just ask, church don't have to be going on for you to receive from God. You don't have to have the evangelist to lay hands on you to receive from God. Amen. There's a story about a man that came up to John G. Lake, John Graham Lake, missionary to Africa. And a uh, guy came up to him and he said, uh, I, I feel the urge to go to hospitals and pray for people. And he said, well, why don't you do it? He said, well, because I'm not a preacher. He said, what's that got to do with it? And he took the word of God and began to expound upon him. Where are you going with this? I'm talking about leaders teaching the Word of God. He's been preaching about foundations, been preaching about getting back to the basic. Hey Amen. We need to teach the Word of God. There's too many trying, brother, to coin on what God had already released. They want the world to look at them and say, look what I've got. Hey Amen. When it's all right there at the foot of the cross... It's all right there, the benefits of the cross. All we have to do is just open up our hearts and receive it. And then some knucklehead thinks that he's got the mm, patent on it. I want to tell you, what's available for Charlie Shrum? Let me rephrase that. What's available for Pastor Charlie Shrum? Let me acknowledge you to who you are. What's available for Pastor Charlie Strum is available for Pastor Doug Sink. What's available for Pastor Doug Sink, I don't even know your name, is available for this brother. Amen? What's available for Pastor Ken Norse is available for Brother David. Amen? There's no big eyes or little U's. That's why I thank God that God is up there watching over us. You know what He's looking for? You know why He's watching us? He's looking for some hungry hearts. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. We see that they was 
uh, getting all upset because revival was coming and revival is in the air and people who like the things the way they were try to prevent the revival spreading any further. Oh, don't that sound like 2021? Yeah. All my life I've had church people trying to tell me what I could and could not do spiritually uh, uh, concerning serving God. Uh, I've had preachers uh, tell me, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say something about going witnessing somebody uh, and they say it ain't going to do you no good. Uh, uh, you might as well just leave them alone. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, whether they surrender or not, uh, I'm going to get my heart clean uh, uh, standing before God. They will not stand in judgment Brother Ken, because I did not do my part. It's not going to be on my hand. You see, uh, uh, you, you're about to go there, ain't you? Ezekiel said that if the watchman see the sword coming and, and he blows not the trumpet, there's a woe to that watchman. Getting back, people in 2021 don't want revival they, if it don't come through their hand. I, I know pastor after pastor, uh, and you're saying you're being hard on pastors tonight. Uh, so be it. Uh, but I've seen pastor after pastor, uh, if it didn't come through their hand uh, and land it on the people, uh, uh, then it wasn't going to happen in their church. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, it's time for me to get out of the way. Uh, it's time for you to get out out of the way and it's time to let the Holy Ghost uh, uh, come through <laughs> mm. I, I ain't gonna have that if it ain't me too many got the ideal that they know more what God wants and, and needs than God himself mm. we've got leaders of our community professing to be children of God and Christians that will vote everything under the sun in. I want to tell you, if you're a councilman and you're voting for things that's immoral and unright, oh, my friend, there's a danger and a world to your soul. I hope every mayor, I hope every councilman in Bledsoe County is listening to me. I want to tell you, if you're going to call yourself a child of God, you better be standing for the truth and the right. You better have your feet on the B-I-B-L-E. God's watching the leaders today. There were the leaders who liked the things the way they were. It suited their preferences. Their attempts to discourage the people of God and to derail the revival were woefully inadequate. But I want to tell you, God's watching. There's people who tried to derail this revival. You didn't say that, did you? Yes, I did. There's people tried to derail this revival. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a will of God. And there's God's will. It's time for the children of God to learn the difference. And when God determines something other to be, no matter what, it's going to happen. Amen? But He's watching leaders. He's watching leaders. Businessmen, He's watching you. How you conduct your business. He's watching how you treat your customers. He's watching you. Mm, the God that's watching leaders. You said, I thought you was going to encourage us. Well, the mess is not over with. Just hold on. Boy, he find that. That the Bible teaches us in one translation says that the Lord was overseeing the entire situation. God is watching every move we make. You see, that is a sacred desk. I honor it. I respect it. I respect it highly. 
And I want to tell you, there's too many that's stepping behind the pulpits on Sunday mornings across our land that don't even have no idea what's between the lids of that blessed book. My friend, they'll go to the newspaper. They'll go to the internet. They'll find a reader's digest to get them a message so they may tickle their ears and the congregations are swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. And they'll say, it, oh, just give me a teacher. I've got an each and ear and scratch my itch. If we're going to lead people to the Lord, then we've got to be led by the Lord. Is that right? First Peter 2 and 9 said, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Folks, he has chosen us for a time as this. The brother said that we're all leaders, did he not? Are we not all ministers regardless of what gender we are or our social status? It is our job as the people of God to lead the lost to the Lord. And how do we expect to lead the lost when we are not being led by the Spirit of God? Is that right? Too many pastors, as he said, stand behind the sacred desk of God and they are not led by the Spirit of God. And so they miss out on the move of the Holy Ghost. And friend, if there's ever been a time that the church needs a move of the Holy Ghost. This is the time. And so it's going to take some people that will stand up and stand for what saith the Word of God. I believe it was Ezekiel that the Lord said, I sought for a man among them that would stand in the gap and make up a hedge before me, but I found none. He's looking for some people that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He's looking for some leaders. He's looking for those that will be led by the Spirit of Almighty God. Amen. Oh, I didn't know we was going to do all this. But you know what? I, I brought my old Bible tonight, and, 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 and that thing is just tore up, and the Lord laid something on my heart here a while back, and uh, I, 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 I preached it uh, a little bit to one congregation, but I was telling Brother Donnie about it, and he was talking about leadership, and, <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, I, I blame a lot uh, of the way the church is today on leadership. And, and I blame a lot on the congregation because they won't let the leader be the leader. Huh? Come on now. That's what a lot of people say. Oh, we, I was sharing with a brother before church. I said, you know, uh, uh, just about every church you go into, uh, there's a church boss you got to deal with because somebody wants to do it their way like Burger King instead of God's way. And I'm going to tell you something right now. God didn't tell Israel, amen, to lead Moses. He said Moses to lead Israel, amen. Oh, come on now. Oh, I, this is a hard word, brother. I can't eat that word. I have My teeth just ain't working tonight. My dentures is in a, a cleaner and I'm just gumming this to death. But, honey, I want to tell you something you need to eat upon this. Too many people want to tell the leaders what to do instead of letting the leader do what God wants them to do. I'm bold. I'm just plain vanilla, honey. I got a shirt the church made me one time. I wear it every now and then. It said plain vanilla. I'm bold as a lion, honey. When God speaks to me and gets upon me, I'll tell you like it is uh, uh, with a holy boldness. You know, I, I love people, and, and, I, and I love everybody. I try to love everybody. But, honey, I'm going to tell you something. When the spirit of Korah comes in... Uh, uh, when the spirit of Korah comes into a church or a congregation, honey, you better get your boots on. You better get your armor on. And you better be praying and seeking God because that spirit of Korah is going to come up against you and try to stop the move of God that God wants in that church. I got a book at home in my library that says games that church bosses play. Every pastor needs to read it. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. It's time people got their hands off the pastor, a real pastor or a real preacher, and let him follow God and let them follow him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But if I stop following Christ, you better stop following me. Honey, I'm telling you something right now. I'm not following a man. I'm following a man that hung on a cross, amen, died for me and rose from the grave on the third day, and he's sitting on the right hand of God 
God today making intercession for you and me. Uh, he's not just my Jesus. He's my brother in the Lord. Uh, he's my brother in the kingdom. Amen. You are a citizen of the kingdomship of heaven. It's time people woke up and understood, amen, who you are in Christ. Don't let the devil tell you that you are nothing but a peon or a speck of dirt, amen. You are a brother to Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. You know, it says in Ezekiel, I'm not going to read that. I'm going to let Brother Josh have it here in a minute. It says in Ezekiel, let me read you something real fast. I said I wasn't going to read it. God forgive me for that lie. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. In Ezekiel 12, if you're taking notes, I want you to read this. God spoke this to me back in 2019 as I was sitting on my deck meditating, waiting for a word. And that's what you got to do, church. You got to get by yourself if you want God to speak to you. Uh, you can't be in a, amongst a bunch of people all the time and, and carrying on and eating. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to hear God, you got to get by yourself in a solitude, in silence to hear the voice and the still small voice of God. You've got to meditate. Uh, as David said, I meditate upon thy word, O oh God, day and night. Uh, honey, I'm going to tell you something in Ezekiel. The Lord spoke this to me uh, right before the, 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 the COVID hit. He told me he was going to shake this nation one more time before the COVID did hit in 2016. If Teresa was here, she'd verify what I'm telling you. No, I don't go around prophesying and stuff, but I am a prophet. God uses me that way at times. Not all the time, but I do at times. And a lot of people, amen, uh, probably wouldn't recognize that and say, well, I, well, you can say what you want. I really don't care. I'm all down good. It waters off me just like a water on a duck back. Huh, come on, don't, go, don't get quiet on me. You can't let everybody's words, amen, settle upon you and stop the word of God in you and the move of God in you. If I did, honey, I'd be crawling up under a rock because there's no telling that the people that want to talk about me all the time and run me down, what they don't know is they're cursing me. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. It's better to bless somebody than it is to curse them. Honey, you better watch that tongue. But it says in a, oh, I, ain't get, I ain't going there tonight. Uh, honey, I can, but I'm not. It says in Ezekiel 12 and 17, he said, Moreover, the Lord, or the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Amen. Uh, listen to this really well. It says, Come unto me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness, and say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel, they shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb? Here, hear this now. He said, What is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision, for there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord. I will speak. Uh, I hear this. He said, I will speak. Amen. I will speak. Uh, or oh, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass, uh, and it shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O oh rebellious house, will I say the word and will Perform it, uh, saith the Lord God. Again, the, well, you missed your time to shout right there. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesied of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. 
Honey, I'm going to tell you something. That proverb right there. Oh, you, oh, you, done, you should have been swinging from a chandelier. Honey, you missed that. He said, the words I speak, amen, will be no more prolonged. But they will come to pass right before your right before your eyes amen and we in a day and time in this last day when god speaks a word amen you're not gonna have to wait on it amen because he said he's gonna bring it to pass right before your eyes amen bless god bless god hallelujah bless god oh bless god I'm going to ask you why you're here tonight. Jesus, he asked the people why you came out to the wilderness when John the Baptist was preaching. Why did you come? Did you come to see a reed shaking in the wind? Why did you come tonight? What is it that draws you to this tent? Is it the power of an almighty God? Or was it your curiosity? Praise God, if it's your curiosity, I pray it kill every foul thing in your spirit and that life begins to be born again in you tonight. Did you come tonight to watch people drive by? Did you come tonight to hear a fancy preacher clothed in soft raiment? Or did you come tonight to get a hold of the power of God? It's been said tonight that anybody can be a leader. Anybody can lead someone. Father, where are you at leading your children to God? Mother, where are you at leading your children to God? Grandparents, where are you at leading your grandchildren and your sons and your daughters to God? We need to be on our face before a mighty God. He's given us freedom from this thing called sin. He's given us freedom. But it's up to us to take up our cross and follow Jesus. There's never been another leader born greater than Jesus Christ. There's never been another leader like Jesus Christ. We count time off of Jesus Christ. Our calendar flips over by Jesus Christ. It's time we take notice of this one named Jesus. Yes, he's talking about John the Baptist, about why did you come out, but what was John doing? He was preparing the way for Jesus. He was leading the people to repentance before Jesus ever come on the scene. Let me tell you something, preacher, if they make fun of you. John the Baptist was out there preaching. He was preaching the word of God true and straight. He wasn't bending the gospel for no one. But I'll tell you who Jesus come to ridicule. He come to the Pharisees and he said the axe will be laid at the root of the tree. I'm sorry, that's John the Baptist said that. But uh, Jesus backed him up. He said it'll start here in my house. Judgment will begin in my house. Judgment will begin right here in my house. And I'm telling you something, man of God, you that's been called but not stepping up to your calling, you woman of God that's been called but not stepping up to your calling, woe unto you if you do not follow after Jesus. Woe unto you. Oh, that's a hard word, woe. It's not a pleasant word. But as my brother Donnie said, you won't be gnashing on me in hell. You won't be coming and biting on me in hell. I love you ever, everyone enough. I love everybody that's down here that's laid on the sidewalk drunk tonight. I love you enough to tell you there's a better way, and that way is Jesus. And I'm telling you, if you'll just get to an altar, you may not be able to get up and come physically to an altar, but make you an altar right where you are and decide tonight to follow Jesus. It may mess up your whole world, but you better decide tonight to follow Jesus. Oh, Lord. Jesus asked the people, in Luke chapter 6, he said, Why call me Lord, 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 but you will not do what I say. Where's the people of God today doing what Jesus says? Where's thus saith the Lord? Pastors, you want to fill your churches, start doing what thus saith the Lord. Forget about these programs. Forget about fancy shows to put on. Forget about big names. Let me tell you, if you're doing anything else other than lifting up the name of Jesus, all those works are going to come to nothing. You say, it's not popular to preach Jesus. It wasn't popular in John the Baptist's time either. It wasn't popular when Jesus came on the scene. The self-righteous hypocrite gnashed his teeth on Jesus. 
But he spoke the truth. He spoke it in love, trying to show them a better way and what it do. They'd go away just... Why? Because the spirit that they was controlled by. That spirit of power and control. That spirit of manipulation. That spirit of, of I'm better than you. The, the spirit of desiring worship for themselves rather than worship of God was all over those men. Jesus stepped out on the scene and messed up their whole entire pattern. God told the priest to go and get in the dirty work. The priest was to be covered in the blood, offering the sacrifices. The priest was to be leading the people, showing them a better way, showing them how it was to be done. But we find these Pharisees and Sadducees dressed in fine raiment nowhere around the blood-stained altar. I want you to think about that for a minute, preacher. How long's it been since you've been to a blood-stained altar? How long's it been since you've been to the foot of the cross? No, you may have not had to go back for salvation, but there's power at the foot of the cross. There's healing at the foot of the cross. There's deliverance at the foot of the cross. How long's it been since you've back, been back to the foot of the cross? It's time we that call ourselves men of God, women of God, it's time that we truly desire the things of God. It's time that we walk according to the Word. It's time that we no longer be led by our own selfish desires, but what thus saith the Lord. It's time that we be led by the Spirit of God. How can I be led by this Spirit of God? It's been said right here. There's no difference between Pastor Charlie Shrum, Pastor Brother Ken, Pastor Brother Elmer, Pastor Brother Doug. No difference. Between any of you and my children. No difference between any of you and this young man Samuel. There's no difference. I can't go and do the things of God. Yes, you can if only you'll have faith in your God. You're going to have to lay some things down. But didn't Jesus say, take up your cross and follow me? Did he not say, take up your cross and follow me? Yes, this life gets tiresome, it gets burdensome and heavy. But I'm telling you, if you'll take up your cross, that which God has called you to do on this earth, and follow Him, there's no devil in hell that can stop you if you'll set your eyes on Jesus and follow His paths. It's time the church of the living God will be led by His Spirit. I'm not ashamed to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for